I'm addicted to Halo Infinite multiplayer. That's a pretty bad thing considering the flight just went offline and I can't play it anymore. I'm already starting to feel symptoms of withdrawal. I stream nearly every day that it was online, and I still haven't had enough. But as fun as the multiplayer was, it wasn't perfect. Which is okay, I mean that's what the flight is for after all. So here are my thoughts on the game so far. What I liked, what I didn't like, and what I think they should change. Before we get started, I want to give a background to myself as a Halo player. I started playing when I was 5 years old. I have loved the series ever since, and it's one that I hold near and dear to my heart. I'll say now that I'm a bit of a Bungie fanboy. I really did not like Halo 4 and 5 that much, in fact I don't even have Halo 4 installed on the Master Chief Collection, and that should tell you everything you need to know about me. Which is important when I say that I think 343 did an exceptional job with Halo Infinite so far. It's good. It's very, very good. In my opinion this game plays like Halo 3, with a little bit of reach sprinkled in, and major improvements added on. The first thing that I want to talk about is the weapon sandbox. I think that is easily the best thing 343 has done with the game. Every weapon has its place, and any weapon can be used on the battlefield. During the first flight, players complained that the assault rifle was too strong. Some said that the pistol shouldn't have such a quick time to kill. On the smaller arena maps where it's constant CQB, those weapons certainly can have more of a presence. But with the newer, open maps like Behemoth introduced, on top of Fragment and Big Team Battle, that's where the sandbox starts to come together. The sidekick's weak aim assist and open reticle makes it tough to get kills from farther away. The assault rifle does well at close to mid-range engagements, but past that you'll find yourself yearning for a battle rifle or a commando. Some of the guns even take a little bit of figuring out, like the heat wave for example. At first I was treating it like a shotgun, since it fired multiple shots I figured close range is where it would be the strongest. But as I used it more and more, I got more comfortable firing it slightly farther away than I normally would where I found the weapon had quite a nice sweet spot that wasn't exactly in your face, but not quite at the mid-range either. But I have to say, my favorite new weapon is definitely the Ravager. The thing melts shields, it's an excellent option at close to mid-distances, and it shreds vehicles. With the entire weapon sandbox being usable, every game you play feels fresh. As opposed to Halo 3 where it's 16 battle rifles shooting at each other, one match you might find yourself with a shock rifle, picking people off from afar. Others you'll rush objectives with an assault rifle and fight in the thick of things. All of it makes for a fantastic combat loop, and the excellent sound design gives you a great sense of immersion on the battlefield. Aside from weapons, I also think that the vehicles are balanced very well, in big team battle. On the 4v4 map behemoth, the vehicles were overwhelming. I think that this really has to do with the map design. Behemoth is a big, wide open space, and though there aren't towers and a bridge in the center, vehicles don't have much of a problem maneuvering around. To say it shortly, the vehicles on Behemoth have free reign to do pretty much whatever they want. They're also beefier and protect their occupants much more than they did in the previous games, so without a dedicated anti-vehicle weapon, you were in a lot of trouble if you found yourself going up against one. And it does not help that on Behemoth, the skewer doesn't always spawn, and it can instead spawn two sniper rifles. Fragment, on the other hand, is designed so that players on foot have access to places that are not as accessible to vehicles. Hills around the edges, a slim corridor in the center, and narrow walkways make it so players driving are encouraged to take the wide open roads that weave throughout the map. This makes it easy for the players to shoot at the vehicles, without the vehicles being able to shoot at them as easily. The opposite is also true, and players in vehicles will find themselves dominating anyone caught out in the open. In addition, many more anti-vehicle weapons spawn on Fragment. Ravagers, skewers, rocket launchers, and even spike grenades are constantly in rotation, so you'll never find yourself short on firepower. Overall, when it comes to multiplayer, I think 343 has absolutely nailed it. It's exactly what I want out of an arena shooter. The weapon sandbox is incredibly well done, the sound design is phenomenal, the maps are well designed, and the art style brings everything back to classic Halo. But of course, with every critique, there also has to be negatives, so let's jump into those. So I'm going to get the technical stuff out of the way first, because that's the stuff that 343 should be getting rid of with the release of the full game. The biggest problem that I ran into is how weirdly this game is optimized. When I started playing, my modest rig was able to run it on high settings at 120fps at 1920x1080 while streaming. Pretty good, I thought. But as I played more matches, I started to experience bad frame stutters. They got so bad that the game became pretty much unplayable, and later I found out that to fix the problem I had to close the client and reopen it. This actually did work, but in the final release I'd like not to close and open my game after every match. 
that would just be annoying. Next, the audio settings would not save whenever I closed the game and reopened it. On top of that, the push to talk does not work. If I wanted to communicate with my teammates, I had to change the settings to open mic, and as a streamer, you can see how this would be problematic. Also, if you replaced your Spartan's right arm with a robot arm, there'd be a missing polygon in the game and it would be floating in thin air. I'm sure there's more bugs here and there, but I'm also sure those are being reported to 343 and are being worked out. Now, I'm going to get into what I disliked about Halo Infinite, and this is going to be my opinion, so if you disagree, feel free to tell me in the comments below. One thing I really didn't like is how the radar works. For those that don't know, it only tracks the movement of someone that is sprinting or moving fast, or someone that is firing their weapon. I feel this is problematic because it takes away a big reason to crouch in the game, and now pretty much all it's good for is teabagging, which is fine. But I found this change most annoying in firefights. All the Halo vets out there know that one way to defend yourself against an enemy that has the drop on you is to duck behind a wall and toss a grenade at them as they come at you. The radar aided in this and helped you time your throw, or helped you to know if you even should throw, since the enemy might be smart enough not to pursue you. Now the way radar is, you pretty much have to guess if the person you're fighting is gutsy enough to run through the doorway. If you're lucky, you might be able to get them, but more often than not, you'll either mistime your grenades since you won't know when to throw them, or you'll just waste them altogether. Another criticism I have has to do with a couple of the weapons. While I did say earlier that I thought the sandbox was excellently balanced, it's not perfect. The first weapon I'd like to talk about is the plasma pistol. This weapon is... is pretty bad. In my time with the flight, it definitely was the least picked up weapon off the racks. The reason for this is because it no longer EMPs vehicles. In my opinion, that takes out a lot of the utility that the plasma pistol had. It's pretty much limited to being used for the noob combo now, and that isn't going to be used as much since every other weapon has so much more utility. You can see similar results with the Pulse Carbine and the Ravager, so really there is no point in carrying the Plasma Pistol. If it were up to me, I would simply have it EMP vehicles again. But if you don't want to go that route, then I'd make it so the charged Plasma Pistol shot packs a real punch. And I mean, kill an enemy that has below 25% shields with full charge. At least then, it would have some utility in certain firefights. The other weapon I really disliked was the Bulldog. As the new shotgun of the series, it does not kill people in one shot at close range. I find this to be very discouraging when deciding whether or not to pick up the weapon. I mean, sure, it might have a better range than other shotguns in the past, but a slightly longer range shotgun is a role that the heat wave fills. So far in firefight, what we don't have is a close combat counter to the gravity hammer. Where the gravity hammer is slow to swing, but devastating once it hits, the shotgun should be the opposite of that. Devastating once fired, but with a slow pump afterwards. That way the shotgun will kill faster than the gravity hammer would, but if the first shot is missed, then the player would be left vulnerable. That way, the identity of both weapons is maintained. I'm going to give 343 the benefit of the doubt on this one, as they might introduce another weapon that fills the gap that I'm talking about, but either way, I still think it sits in an awkward contention with the heat wave. My last and final complaint has to do with the progression system. I'm totally fine with the battle pass, but progressing the battle pass solely through challenges and not match XP is just plain dumb to me. Challenges are a good thing. They incentivize unique play and they give players an extra goal as they play their matches. But using only challenges to progress only serves to limit the players. I'm not someone who goes for challenges very often. I'm someone who would rather focus on the game and not give myself another thing to worry about when I'm playing, but I found myself having to adjust my playstyle and use the weapons that I didn't want to use and perform worse than I normally would just so I could get these challenges out of the way. This really upset me on the last night of the flight because I got into a match with Mint Blitz and I sucked ass because I was going for stupid pistol kills in big team battle. Curse you, 343. I'll never forgive you for the embarrassment you caused me in front of a Halo celebrity. There's a whole lot I could say about progression through challenges alone, but I think the community as a whole has already voiced their concerns. To me, it's like having skill-based matchmaking in Call of Duty without a ranked playlist. There's, there's just no reason for it. But anyways, that's gonna wrap it up for my critique today. Hopefully those watching had a good time, and if this somehow finds its way to a 343 employee, I hope my words can help you guys craft the best game possible. Like I said earlier, I'm a Bungie fanboy, but I'm really rooting for 343 on this one. Also Mint Blitz, I'm not trash. Please give me another chance.
If you liked the video, consider subscribing. And if you want to see me live, consider following me on Twitch. I'm trying to be a real streamer and any support helps. But that's it for me now, guys. This has been Nico V and I will see you all next time. Thank you so much for watching.